بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we passing the speed of the month of Ramadan and we're covering just some of the virtues of Ramadan also and today is the, the day of Juma alhamdulillah it's a very special day and this is a day when it's emphasized that a person should try and engage themselves in reciting uh, they should try and engage themselves in reciting salawat meaning they should try and engage themselves in in invoking peace and blessings upon our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the shortest uh, invocation is to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so to say this is as often as possible during this day and it holds great merit and great virtue but there's one thing which um, I'd just like to emphasize on that uh, regarding the month of Ramadan our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned that there's four acts that there's four there's four things which are which a person should take advantage of and a person should be doing in a try their utmost to do in abundance. So one of them was to recite the uh, the kalima, the, the first kalima, kalima tayyibah, la ilaha illallah. So regarding this kalima, um, there's, a, an, there's a hadith, uh, and this hadith is called, the this kalima, la ilaha illallah, is called it the highest form of dhikr, it's the highest form of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, there's another narration as well, this narration is in Mishkat, Mishkat al-Masabi, um, that Abu Sayyid al-Qudri, he, he mentions that once uh, Musa, he, he begged Allah ta'ala to, to grant him a special verse, uh, and by granting him the special verse, he, he may use this to to engage himself in the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala. He may use this to engage himself in the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. And and also, uh, you know, use these words to, as, as dua, to ask of Allah Ta'ala. So, upon this, Allah Ta'ala asked Musa Alayhi Salaam to recite this kalima. La ilaha illallah. So, Musa Alayhi Salaam, he said, Oh Allah Ta'ala, this uh, this is a verse recited by by all your servants. Meaning, w- one thing to be, to keep in mind is that all of the Anbiya Ali Salam, when they were sent with their mission, they were all sent with this same mission, this one mission, and that is to uh, to propagate Tawheed, to propagate the oneness of Allah, Allah Taala, to to make it clear and bold that La ilaha illallah, there is no one worthy of worship besides Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So now Musa he's saying that this is something which you know all your servants uh, the they say you know what's what's so special about that it's common. I desire something special, something unique. So Allah Taala replied that oh, Musa salam, if the seven heavens, the earth, and all its occupants except myself are are placed in in one pan of the scale, so in one side of the scale. The seven heavens, uh, the earth, and everything which the earth contains is placed uh, in on one side. And besides Allah Ta'ala. So basically Allah Ta'ala is saying that, okay, put everything on one side. And this kalima was placed on, on the other side. So this kalima will outweigh everything. SubhanAllah. This is the, the weight of the words. Or this is the weight of these words. La ilaha illallah. But the words La ilaha illallah would, would outweigh everything. In another hadith, it is mentioned that should anyone sincerely recite this kalima, La ilaha illallah, the doors of Jannah open up for such a person immediately and nothing can stop him from reaching Allah Ta'ala's throne. The only condition is that the reciter, he should, uh, he should refrain from major sins. Okay, so obviously when reciting this, a person should should re- refrain from from major sins and allah ta'ala out of, out of his uh, infinite mercy he he provides in great abundance anything which uh, which is needed by by all so we find that you know in this in this world when we examine our, our basic worldly re- re- requirements every human being needs water we'll see that you know water which is needed by all it is freely available. 
while for example something like gold okay it's um it it is a need as well obviously it's it's a form of wealth but it's not of of common use it's it's scarcely available you can say it's it's not something it's not as widely available as water, as water is now one thing is why do we need water for in order for the for the body to survive we don't need gold to survive obviously you need gold as a wealth you need it as a means of transactions to buy and sell but you don't need it to actually survive so khair <laughs> similarly this kalima is the highest form of dhikr and one amazing thing is this is available for everyone everyone can say this so any everyone can say this and everyone uh, is able to recite and enjoy its blessings meaning it's not restricted to just a few people you know it's not restricted to just the pious people only that only they can benefit from this anyone can benefit from this so everyone is encouraged to recite this la ilaha illallah in abundance now the second thing which our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned to to say in abundance during this blessed month of ramadan is istighfar astaghfirullah I mean, asking Allah Taala's forgiveness, and there, there are many hadith regarding the the virtues uh, of of istighfar and the benefits of istighfar. And in fact, in uh, in one hadith, um, our Prophet Sallallahu he he's mentioned that man lazim al istighfar jala lahu min kulli duif al makhraja wa min kulli ham al faraja wa rasaqahu min haythu la yahtasib. That whoever you know says uh, a great deal of istighfar, whoever consistently makes a habit of saying astaghfirullah then allah ta'ala he'll open a way out for this person from from all difficulties ja'ala lahu min kulli dhiqin makhraja dhiq means something tight so from every tight angle every tight situation from you know from you know impossible situations uh, you know however you know how small and tight it seems that you know almost like there's there's no light at the end of the tunnel but if a person is punctual and, and istighfar then whatever the problem is inshallah ta'ala allah ta'ala will make a way out for such a person so min kulli dhiqin makhraja is that if a person he's punctual he's regular in reciting this inshallah ta'ala and he says a great deal of istighfar then allah ta'ala will inshallah ta'ala make a way out for him from all difficulties wa min kulli hammin faraja and allah ta'ala will release him from sorrows I means from from you know emotionally low situations wa min wa razaqahu min haythu la yahtasib and allah taala he will you know in a similar manner he will also provide him uh, provisions he will also provide him uh, rizq from unexpected sources razaqahu min haythu la yahtasib from such sources where this person had no idea and no imagination that you know it would even come from there in another hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that you know, every person you know kullu uh, bani adam khata'un that you know every man is a sinner every man is a mistake maker wa khayru khata'in at-tawwabun and the the best of those of, of the sinners are those who repent and and seek forgiveness so astaghfirullah is you know the translation is i seek i seek your forgiveness allah taala that's what we're saying astaghfirullah seeking allah ta'ala's forgiveness so when a when a person commits a sin then it's mentioned that you know that spiritually there's it's like a a black spot settles on on a person's heart but when a person repents this black spot is washed away otherwise what happens is this black spot if it's uh, if, if, no, if, uh, if a person doesn't seek allah ta'ala's forgiveness and this black spot remains you say permanently or it builds up and then you know it it really uh it it nullifies and it how would you say it uh, ruins or it erodes a person's spiritual ability and a person's spiritual sense to to do good actions and to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also advised us about that we mentioned to the the third and fourth point which our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised us was was with to ask for jannah and seek protection from the fire of jahannam and it's very important that you know when we when we ask Allah Taala for jannah 
that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to bless us with, Jannatul Firdaus. Jannatul Firdaus is the, the a very high rank, the, the highest rank, the highest level in, in Jannah. Now just moving topics, uh, another another point to highlight during this blessed month of Ramadan is Zakatul Fitr. Zakatul Fitr, Sadaqatul Fitr. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's been mentioned in the hadith uh, Ibn Abbas in the Riyadh al-Ain Muqala, Farada Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zakatul Fitr, Tuhratan Nisa'imi min al-Nagwi wa Rafati wa Tu'amatan ni Masakeen. Ibn Abbas Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he narrates that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he he made zakat al-fitr, he made sadaqat al-fitr compulsory. And this was made compulsory, uh, and this was stipulated by as a means for uh, purifying uh, a fasting person from the, the shortcomings and the errors which he may have committed during the, the month. And this was also stipulated and made fard by tu'amat uh, al-masakin in order to, to also feed and, and provide for the poor. So Sadaqat al-Fitr, this is a certain amount of wealth which is given by a wealthy Muslim to a poor Muslim, either on or uh, or before or even you say after Eid al-Fitr. Hence, if you notice that we there's there's two Eids in uh, in a year for in our for Muslims. So one is Eid al Eid al-Fitr, the other is Eid al-Adha. So Eid al-Fitr, this is the uh, this is the Eid which is after the month of Ramadan, as called as known as Eid al-Fitr. Why? Because the the act of Sadaqat al-Fitr, this is this is connected to this Eid. As Eid al-Adha, this is to do with the uh, Adha. This is to do with sacrifice. I mean, the the Eid where the sacrificing animals. So sacrificing animals is connected with the other Eid. So this is how the the Eids are named. So generally, the actual ruling of Sadaqat al Fitr is that a person um, they they give that that money um, to the poor uh, either before the the Eid Salah or after the Eid Salah. That's generally the case. But as we know in this country, um, there's hardly any poor people. Uh, you can say or hardly you can say people who are eligible to to take zakah sadaqat al-fitr now one of the reasons why it's permissible also we, we give this when we give the sadaqat al-fitr we give it beforehand in this, especially in this country and generally as a practice you know way before uh you know the, the day of Eid arrives and the reason why we do this is because so that the, the money it reaches the poor people and then the poor people they can do something with their money before Eid. They can buy themselves, you know, some food, some clothes, or so they could also enjoy their Eid instead of giving it after or perhaps on the day. So that's why uh, we're encouraged to to give our sadaqat al-fitr uh, in the month of Ramadan, you know, as as early as possible. Ideally, before before the day of Eid, inshallah ta'ala. So now, just a, a few points regarding sadaqat al-fitr. That um, sadaqat al-fitr is uh, is fard. It's fard upon a person upon whom zakat is fard upon. So, if zakat, if a person, the, the, the threshold is about uh, 245 pounds. So, if a person has 245 pounds, which is spare cash, and he uh, and it's beyond his needs, obviously. Um, so, if a person's the owner of more than that, then that means zakat is, is fard on the person. Um and obviously, there's some condition, conditions as well. We've been going through the uh, through the details of zakat, alhamdulillah, in um, since the start of Ramadan. We'll try and inshallah, ta'ala, we'll try and upload those sessions on the on the website, inshallah. But okay, but just to keep things short and brief, that um, a person upon whom zakat is fard, um, uh, then for such a person, it's fard too, also. Uh, pay sadaqat al fitr, and not just a person who upon whom zakat is fard upon, also a person who perhaps zakat is not fard upon him. Perhaps a person doesn't have extra cash which is, um, you know, above the threshold. However, the person does own matters and other items of wealth which are beyond his basic needs, which is equivalent to uh, uh, to. 
the, the threshold. So what do we mean by extra items and, and extra needs? For example, a person may, might have, let's just say, uh, two phones. Okay. Now, one phone is a necessity, so we won't, in, we won't include that. So whatever is necessary, you take that out of the equation. But there might be a spare phone, a spare laptop, a spare car. Now, if we add all of those things and the value is beyond the threshold which has been set, so let's just say the threshold is, for example, two hundred and forty-five pounds. So if the 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 matter of the spare phone, if the value of the spare phone and this, you know, the this spare laptop and this spare car all together, it's beyond two hundred. The value of all of that is beyond two hundred and forty-five pounds. Then it is thought upon such a person to pay sadaqat al-fitr. And extra wealth, like I mentioned, are those items which they're not used every day, but they're, they're used occasionally. There's more detail to this, but we try and keep things as brief as possible, inshallah ta'ala. And also, now the next question is, okay, how much is sadaqat al-fitr? I mean, what's the amount? So if a person, so the, the amount of sadaqat al-fitr is actually um, 1.6 uh, uh, kilograms of, of wheat. So either a person, they can give that 1.6 kilograms of wheat to a poor person, or they can give the value of that to a poor person, the value in cash. So now the value of, uh, in cash, it varies. So our masjid, um, they're, they're, they stipulated it this year as five pounds. So Sadaqat al-Fitr, in our case, it will be five pounds. So for this month of Ramadan, to give that five pounds would be so this is separate. This has nothing to do with zakat. Sadaqat al-fitr is something separate. Zakat is something separate. <coughs> so we'll just keep it until there, inshallah ta'ala. Hopefully um, things are were, things were clear. If there are any questions or anything or something's, uh, you know, um, something hasn't really been understood properly, then, you know, please just uh, do send do send myself a message or you could get in contact with the uh, one of the committee members, inshallah ta'ala, one of the, the brothers of the masjid, inshallah ta'ala. Um, may Allah ta'ala gives a tawfiq to benefit, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah ta'ala gives a tawfiq to, inshallah ta'ala. Make the most out of this Ramadan. And may Allah ta'ala accept our efforts in this holy and blessed month of Ramadan. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi, ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.